There are a lot of things that go into starting a WordPress blog and it is so easy to get overwhelmed. So in today's video, I'm gonna help you break down the most important steps to help you get started. The first thing you need to do is pretty obvious. You need to pick out a niche and you also wanna make sure that niche is going to be profitable and you know a lot about it so that you can write a bunch of content surrounding that topic. If you are just choosing a niche because you want to make a lot of money with it, you aren't going to get very far. It's not an easy thing to do to make money online, so you're going to need to make sure you're passionate about the topic in order to not get burned out and quit your blog before you even start making a lot of progress. You're also going to be talking about this topic a lot, so you want to make sure it's something that you're passionate about so that you don't get bored and move on. And if this is something you're struggling with and you need extra help, check out this video up here on how to choose the perfect blogging niche. The next thing you need to do is start comparing hosting companies where you want to host your blog at. There are a ton of options to choose from and there isn't going to be really a whole lot of difference between one company and the next other than the price. Of course there are slight variations here in what they offer here and there but the main thing that you want to focus on is making sure that your site is going to be fast. The hosting company that I've been using for a few years now is SiteGround and they often run sales throughout the year so I would keep an eye on SiteGround for hosting your blog and I'll leave a link down below to them if you want to check them out as well. Next thing you need to do is pick out a domain name and this is something you can do with SiteGround as well, it's pretty inexpensive to do. Your domain name should be something easy to remember, easy to spell, and something related to your blogging niche. Or if you are doing a lifestyle blog, you can use your name if you'd like, because obviously that's what mine is. But you need to make sure that your domain name is available first before you actually purchase it, which is something that SiteGround will tell you when you go to type in a domain name that you want. The last step is to usually install WordPress, which for most hosting companies now is just a one-click install, so it's super easy to do. After that, you should have access to start setting up yourself hosted WordPress website, which means the next step for you is to choose your brand for your site. You'll need to figure out what colors to use, what fonts, and what theme design you want to use as well. This may be overwhelming and may take some time to decide on and refine, but it's also a super fun process. If you're struggling to come up with brand colors, you could check out Pinterest. That's what I did when starting on my brand colors and getting up a bunch of inspiration on Pinterest. You can also start by looking up themes. These usually come with preset colors that you can change if you want, but if you just like the brand that they have already set up on the theme, you can use those for your brand colors as well. I love going theme shopping and I've changed my theme a few different times at this point and all of my themes come from either Etsy or Creative Market, so I recommend going there if you're looking for a cheap theme. Installing a theme can be a little bit of a headache, but there are most likely instructions that come with your theme to help you install it. Now I want to talk about how to customize your site. I want to go over important pages to have, how to customize your navigation bar and your site and different things like that. So the way that you can go to customize your site is appearance and customize. This is gonna open up this window here. It's gonna show you what your active theme is and give you a bunch of different bars here on the side. So the first thing is site identity. You put your site title in and your tagline, and then you can also include a logo, which will show up right here when someone clicks on your site. So go ahead and add those if you want. Typography, going to your site title, you can figure out what fonts you want, what type of font, if you want it to be italic or whatever, and the site title font sizes. Now when I installed my theme, I believe it told me what to set all of these to. Of course, you can pick whatever font that you want, but I think it told me what I want to set my site title size at, the body size, and gave you like suggestions for what's going to look best with the theme, but you can always change it. I think I've changed mine a little bit, and you can go through and fix a lot of different things in the headings and the letter spacing, and you might want to go through and check out a blog post. So like I can click on beginner blogging tips right here and I can see what this stuff is going to look like. Let me see my headings letter spaces. If I move this, you can see it changed it right here. But of course, I'm going to leave mine at whatever it was. The next thing is the colors and this is where you can put in your brand. So obviously body text color, you want your text to be black. The background color for your entire site, I've chosen white for mine. I think that's kind of standard for most websites. You can choose what your links are going to be and even what your link hover is going to be. So I've chosen gold because that is one of my brand colors. And when you ho hover over it, it goes to a lighter gold, which I think is really cool. And you can choose if you want yours to be blue or whatever colors you want. The primary menu. So I have mine as white, black, and gold. So you can see when I hover over something, it turns gold for the buttons. I chose gold and then I chose white when they hover over it. So if we go back home, you can see that this is my header image here and my site has a background photo that kind of stays static when you move it, which I think looks epic, but that's what my header image looks like. My header background image, which is this image here, 
you can update that. And you're gonna have different settings for whatever your website is. If your website doesn't have this feature, you're not gonna have these options. For the menus, you can click on primary menu here and you can see all of the different things that I have in my menus. This is pretty easy to customize, but it can get a little frustrating and confusing if you don't really know what you wanna have in your home bar. So I have my home, which is just labeled home, and then I have blogging here with all of my different drop downs. And if you want to add anything, you can go here to add items. And let's just say I want to add this random post here. It'll show up down at the bottom. And all you need to do is just click and drag and place it wherever you want. So you can see that this is kind of indented in. I can place it here, here, or I can even place it here. And then when I do that, it will show up down here as a drop down. And then if I do this and put it in one more, it will show up as another section for that. And then of course, if I put it here, it's going to be one of the main tabs on my site right there. I'm gonna delete that though, cause I don't need that there. And let's go back to widgets. So this is a little bit more of like a confusing section. And there's another place that you can get access to this but this will just show you all the different types of footers and headers that you have and social areas and social icons and the cookie bar, which is this right here. That's kind of a confusing thing. I wouldn't worry too much about that or your theme will tell you how to set that up. Homepage settings, you can either have a latest posts setting on your homepage or you can have a static page. I personally prefer to have the static page because you can put a lot more on there. You can have a more clickable homepage because I can have the different buttons on here for people to click on. I can put a tagline on here. I could call out a bunch of other stuff as opposed to having just my latest post be put on here. And when you have a static page like this, like I've called out my YouTube channel and I still have my latest post down here at the bottom. Of course, your theme will show you how you can set up either and it's always up to you what you want to do. I prefer the static homepage. I think it just is going to convert a little bit better. Theme settings here. There's a bunch of stuff here. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Additional CCS, definitely wouldn't worry about that unless your site specifically tells you to put something in and then your copyright text. The next thing that I want to go over is the plugins that you should have on your blog and how you can install them. So first let's go over here to plugins and go to installed plugins so I can show you what I have installed on mine. Now I have a bunch of different plugins. Some of them are required by my theme. Some of them are to help speed up my site and other ones are just because I like them. They're just add-ons to help my site run better. The first and most important plugin you wanna have on your site is SiteKit by Google. Now this does a bunch of different things. And one of the things that is most important is tracking your Google Analytics stats. So the way to add it is you go to add new or you can just click add new down here when you went over here, search plugins and we can search for site kit. And literally all you have to do is click install now and activate and that is it. That is the only thing that you need to do to install. And there is sometimes more setup. Like with SiteKit, there is definitely more setup. You can see I have a tab right here that says SiteKit. And you need to go in your settings and activate things and update things. But in terms of installing, that is all you need to do. The next plugin you want to have is an anti-spam plugin. I'm currently using anti-spam B. You can pay for it. I just have the free version. And it's essentially just an anti-spam plugin that keeps spam comments from going onto your site because I get hundreds of spam comments on my site. And it tries to filter out the ones that are actually real people commenting on them. So that is super important to have. The next one is not necessarily super important to have. It's just my favorite. I use the Gutenberg plugin. It basically changes the way you can format your blog posts as opposed to having the regular WordPress editor. You can have a bunch of different options with the Gutenberg. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Now with Gutenberg, as opposed to having the original WordPress editor, you can have different boxes for every single paragraph that you do. So every time you hit enter, and then you can do slash and get a bunch of different options for blocks that you want to do. If you want to do lists, if you want to import a YouTube video, and you can type in a bunch of different codes. You can embed YouTube videos. I personally think this is the better version of WordPress because it is a lot more updated. But if you like the normal version of WordPress, this is not a plugin that you absolutely need to have in order to run your site. I just like it better. The next important plugin that I have is a broken link checker plugin. This will do exactly as it says. If you have a link that is broken, it will let you know because having a broken link will hurt your website in terms of rankings and user experience, things like that. So you wanna make sure you get 
get rid of your broken links as soon as possible. And the last plugin that I want to recommend to you is an affiliate disclosure plugin. Essentially, all this does is allows you to add a customizable affiliate disclosure so that at the top of every single one of your blog posts, it will tell the reader that you may have affiliate links in your blog post. Now, not every single blog post you do is likely going to have affiliate links, but it's good to have that for the ones that do in case you forget, because it's essential that you disclose when you are using affiliate links. Now, one of the important questions you're probably asking yourself is why can't I start a free blog? And of course you could technically start a free blog. However, I really don't recommend it, but it also depends on what you plan to do in this blogging space. If you are just blogging for fun, you just want to share your posts out to friends and family, then no, you obviously do not need to spend any money at all on blogging. You can use wordpress.com and you don't need to spend any money at all. However, if you are planning to do this for a business, you are planning on selling products and trying to make a business out of this, you absolutely want to be self host and there are a ton of reasons for why, because you are going to own your site. You're going to have a lot more monetization options. It's going to look more professional. There are a ton of reasons why, but if you aren't sure which one is going to be best for you, wordpress.com versus wordpress.org, check out this video right here where I went over the pros and cons of both. Make sure to like this video if you like, and subscribe to my channel down below for more videos just like this. And I'll see you next week. Bye.